section. Hello, my dear students. And this is your obligatory science safety presentation. We're going to be discussing safety because we're going to be having you sign a science safety contract. The one we use is the one put out by Flynn Scientific Company. It's one of the most commonly used ones. In fact, I don't know of any others um, in the country because you know the laboratory counts one fourth of your grade and we have to do a lot of laboratories to make the course a meaningful hands-on learning experience. That necessarily means handling chemicals, handling equipment, working with high voltage, working with heat, fire, and vapors that are potentially harmful if we don't follow accepted safety protocols. Following accepted safety protocols, all the risk is mitigated. And that's why in our science safety contract, the first rule is to conduct yourself in a responsible manner at all times in the laboratory. If you will just follow our instructions and do what we say, there's absolutely no risk in this laboratory. But um, that is mitigated, I mean, that is um, uh, conditional upon following standard safety guidelines, which I'm going to cover some of them with you right now. Every experiment, before we do an experiment, I will cover safety protocols specific to that experiment. So we will be covering these repeatedly and over and over throughout the year. So it also says here, if I may pick and choose a few highlights from this contract, we're going to print it out and have you sign it and return it um, with your parents' signature so that your parents know and understand what we're expecting of all of our students here at Dumas High School and the University of Arkansas Phillips Community College for our chemistry courses. Never work alone. Don't, if I'm not here, don't come in my classroom. And when first entering a science room, do not touch any equipment, chemicals, or other materials in the laboratory area until you are instructed to do so. I have already mentioned this as part of our classroom protocol. When you come in the classroom, there will be equipment set up many times, chemicals set up, test tubes, test tube racks, glassware. Um, we'll be working with fire and flame and vapors and heat and potentially toxic chemicals. They're gonna be in the test tube, not on your hands or on your clothes or anywhere else. But to do and handle these things safely, we need to be instructed first. And so do not just start touching and playing with things. You'll notice I frequently have toys out. If they're out on the desktops and at the front, I will be passing things around, although we are limited in what we can do in this age of coronavirus. But <clears throat> wait until instructed before you start handling the laboratory equipment. When we're doing a lab, there is no eating food, drinking beverages, or chewing gum because we can't have you moving back and forth and touching your face if you're also touching chemicals. Same principle with the coronavirus. If you touch something infected with the coronavirus and then touch your body, rub your eye, you know, um, touch your mouth, you will bite your fingernails, you will be introducing that contamination in your system. It's the same with chemicals. So we can't touch chemicals. And at the end of it, I don't have this down here, but at the end of every lab, I ask everybody to wash their hands. Um, perform only those experiments authorized by the instructor. And this is kind of important and something I deal with, with that um, creature we euphemistically call the adolescent male. 
do not, it would not be a good idea to say, let's see what will happen if we do this. We don't want to go off script in our experiments. When we hand you these chemicals, we're handing them for you to you to demonstrate a specific reaction or a specific property of those chemicals, and we don't want to do any side experiments because you know, we don't know um, until you get a PhD in chemistry like I have, you don't know what some of the possible consequences might be. Um, so carefully follow all my instructions, both written and oral, and do not perform any unauthorized experiments. Never fool around in the laboratory. Horseplay, practical jokes, and pranks are dangerous and prohibited. The first year I quit the university and started teaching at the high school level in Texas, out in West Texas, a young man in a chemistry lab went up to another one and said, I dare you to drink this. In my family, my kids learn we never give or take dares. But this kid drank it. It ended up being concentrated sulfuric acid and he ruined three people's lives. He went to jail because he just happened to have been 18, tried as an adult for assault. The teacher lost her license and was fired. I doubt she'll ever work again in education. And the boy who drank the sulfuric acid lost his esophagus and must eat through a hole in the side of his stomach now because it eroded it. And that was the kind of horseplay we wish to um, do away with. I promise you, actually, in my classroom, there will never be enough sulfuric acid out for that to happen, though. Um, Know the locations and operating procedures of all safety equipment, including the first aid kit, eye wash station, safety shower, fire extinguisher, fire blankets. Know where the fire alarm and the exits are located. So let me tell you what we have in the way, first, of fire alarms and fire exits. We do not have a fire alarm in this room, but we do have fire sensors, and they will detect smoke, they will detect heat, and they will go off and start strobing if too much heat or too much smoke builds up in the classroom. As for the fire extinguishers, there's one at the front of the lab and there's one at the back of the lab. As for exits, there are two exits, really three, but two main ones that are labeled. One at the front of the lab, one at the back of the lab. Which one do you use? Well, if the fire's at the back, use the exit in the front. If the fire's in the front of the room, use the exit at the back. However, when you get to the hallway, you have two exits, right? Or two clear exits. You could zigzag and even go further. No, go away from the fire. If you want to know where a fire alarm is, they're out in the hallway, bright red boxes, at either end of the hallway. Way down there and way down there. But any fire that needs a fire alarm being pulled will probably set off our fire detectors, our fire sensors here in the classroom first. So fire extinguishers are here. Please don't spray anybody with the fire extinguisher. This is a chemical fire extinguisher. I'd rather not add insult to injury and spray them with this. I would love to have a CO2 fire extinguisher to put out my students if they catch on fire. And I've caught a few on fire in my 30 plus years of teaching, almost 40 years of teaching. Um, but everyone should know and remember what happens and what you're supposed to do if you catch on fire. I have one of my children here, I have several of my children here, Guys, look up. What do you do if you catch on fire? Uh, roll. What else? Don't know. Stop, drop, and roll. I use the wind. No, you don't use the wind. So <laughs> The wind spreads it. <laughs> you stop, drop, and roll, and scream, and I will come put you out with one of our fire blankets and drape a fire blanket over you to smother any flames. Come on back here and let's look at some of the other safety features we have. We will be wearing safety goggles, safety glasses, 
preferably safety goggles for every experiment, and I sterilize them between uses in my goggle sterilizer. Should you, in the unlikely circumstance, get something in your eye, we have a safety eye wash here. Push the bar forward, and the water starts coming out. It's soft, beautiful, bubbling water. Just put your eyes in there. I have to admit, I use it all the time to wash pollen and everything out of my eyes. Very refreshing. I love this safety wash. And we have a chemical shower. This is not for putting you out if you're on fire. This is for dousing you if you are contaminated with a large quantity of chemicals, hazardous chemicals. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is over a one inch water main. And when you pull this chain, a tremendous amount of water will come out. I have a floor drain, but it can't begin to handle the water that will come out of this shower. And it's designed to keep going even after you pull it, in case you pass out as you pull it. We'll be ankle deep in water before you know it. It would not be cool to pull this shower unless you need it. Um, and again, it's not for if you're on fire. If you're on fire, stop, drop and roll. Let me put you out with the safety blanket. Other safety equipment. There's another fire extinguisher. There's another exit. Let's continue on on our list of safety features in the lab. Okay, um, notify the instructor immediately of any unsafe conditions you observe. I doesn't hurt my feelings at all if you stop me for questions about safety. And I'll be looking around, making sure you're wearing your safety glasses properly, not like this. I'm sorry, I have to put on my glasses, my reading glasses to see this. Dispose of all chemical waste properly. We don't throw our chemical waste in the trash. We'll be setting up special collection uh, bottles, tins, facilities for that. Um, keep hands away from face, eyes, and mouth while using chemicals. Uh, students are never permitted in the science storage rooms or preparation area. Anytime chemicals, heat, or glass are to be used, you will be wearing laboratory goggles, no exception. Dress properly, long hair must be tied back. If you don't tell my daughter, Emma, I grabbed a bunch of her hair ties in all different colors. And if you need to pull your hair back, ladies and gentlemen, if your hair is too long and flips forward, we want you to have your hair tied back so that you do not catch your hair on fire. I have some hair I got from my barber, actually Emma's hairdresser, and I will let you smell what burning hair smells like. If you catch your hair on fire, you will, I will know about it because it has a very unique smell. There's a high sulfur content in hair. In general, it does not catch your whole hair on fire. It tends to just go whoosh up one strand of hair and doesn't burn hot enough usually to catch the neighboring hair on fire. Usually, unless you're using hair products, mousse gel or hairspray that makes your hair more flammable, then you might have a serious burn and we'll discuss that in class. So long hair tied back, jewelry secure, lab aprons will be provided for your use. We have some small disposable ones. We have some lab coats here. And when the need arises, we have gloves, we have disposable aprons, we have lab coats, we have more hair ties. This being Dumas, all the um, 
all the purple ones are gone. We have hot hands and <laughs> oven mitts to hold the hot things. We have asbestos uh, oven mitts to hold even hotter things. We have gloves. We have safety cleanup, which I'll get to in a minute. These are for little spills and some for moderate spills. So everything's here. It says if mercury thermometers are broken, mercury must not be touched. We just don't use mercury thermometers anymore. The alcohol ones that are produced these days are more accurate and easier to read. So, um, report any accident immediately. I need to know about it because we don't want to delay any treative or palliative treatment or palliative care. Um, if a chemical splashes in your eyes, use the eye wash station for 20 minutes. It takes a long time, but you want to get it out. In general, we're not going to have that problem because we're going to always be wearing our safety goggles. All chemicals are to be considered dangerous and not to be touched and handle flammable hazardous liquids over a pan to contain spills. Never use them or dispose of them near an open flame. Dispense them near open flame. Um, never handle broken glass. If you our handling, if you break something, don't worry. We have a science budget. We can afford a new test tube or new um, beakers or Erlenmeyers. Don't grab for it. Just let it break. We break a lot of stuff on these. These are chemically resistant stone tops, but the stone is really hard. I'll come around. I'll sweep up the glass. And once again, we can't put that in the regular trash. We have special broken glass trash we put it in. And we will keep everybody safe. You know, a, a $5 beaker or even a $50 burette are not worth you getting cut for. So um, those are the highlights of our safety contract. I want to talk to you more about flames. I'll be doing some safety demos on how to light a Bunsen burner, on how to boil water. We'll be doing some other safety demos as we go along. So until then, stay safe and goodbye.